What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of IDK Sports Podcast, your premier podcast talking sports with the average guys. Dirt. My name is Anthony. Got my main man Kenny here with me. What's that? You know what I'm saying? My man, no face, had to get, you know, man, getting married. You know? I get married and whatnot. You know, so he uh, couldn't make it today, but you know, he'll be back around. You know what I'm saying? I don't see him anyway, so it don't really matter. One thing this will prove <laughs> <laughs> is that. Whatever it said in this episode, we ain't even worried about facts because yeah. that's what no cases yeah, for. That's what no cases for. You know so, what I'm saying? But shout out, shout out, no faces. You know what I'm saying? My man Ron, you feel, you know, follow him on the Instas, you know, and everything, you know, for his parlays. We've been winning y'all money. On the low. You know what I'm saying? So that's what's up. That's what's up. Don't forget you can catch us anywhere you get your podcasts at on all platforms and catch us on YouTube on Monday at 5 p.m. Mm-hmm. You know, the only way you can do you can follow us at IDK Sports Pod 23 and subscribe to the YouTube channel. And you can also subscribe to any of your podcast favorite yeah. platforms. And we are there, you know. Big week. We back. Ah. Back recording with another recap show, PSA. Yeah. There will be this recap show and two topic episodes because, again, no, no face thing. getting married. No face not getting married. Next time we record, we'll be at the wedding. And I tried to let us record at the wedding. They weren't feeling it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> record in the back in the group. You know what I'm We tried but. to get a pot off. You know, we don't know. I might. We might hop on something and talk about a little bit of recap. I might yeah. do like a little thing to hop on about it. Recap some scores together because I know how y'all love my yeah, rankings. Yeah, yeah. So we might find a way to make they it happen. Do something right before the best man to meet yourself. You know what what we might find some way. Yeah. Yeah, we can do it remotely. Do a quick, do a quick pod real quick. Yeah. So for y'all, because we don't want no hate mail when we take a week off. Yeah, I'm for that. You know what I'm saying? So we'll be two back to back topic episodes. When we come back to recap, we'll recap all the weeks and everything in sports. And don't forget, you can follow us on IDK Sports Pod 23 and get up to date on things that we're talking about because we're putting out content daily mm-hmm. that you do not want to miss. And you can comment. We're putting out videos, rankings, games to watch, parlays, stardom, sit them, keys to the game, yeah, everything that you want to get with um, with your football pods, come with football being the NFL in full effect. Yeah. And we need some money, man. You know what I'm saying? Throw our little parlays out there. One stop shop. One stop shop, man. So don't forget to follow and subscribe to the YouTube channel. So, you know, we're back now. You know, a couple of weeks passed. Um, to be a little factual. I guess I take over some of that. Hey bro, it's it's the point no case ain't here. You know what I'm saying? So it I don't really care. It's being accurate. That's where I'm at right now. No case ain't here. So um mm-hmm. you might you might get you some accurate answers. Accurate. Might you, not. You might Let's, not. That's all like week two. So let's start. Let's start with my HBCU HBCU folks. Now listen, I'm saying we'll start with the HBCUs first. Week two. Um, last, I'm not talking about this week. Talking about last week. Oh, okay. Coach horses. Okay. All right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I cut all this off. Um, <laughs> North State beat Virginia State 28 to 23. The Battle of the States. Big State versus Little State. North State comes out with the win. Mm-hmm. Also across the pond, um, Virginia Union and. Hampton played. Mm-hmm. Um, that's another big rivalry. The two private black HBCUs in Virginia. I'm gonna get that score last week. <laughs> Hampton won that game, thirty-three to twenty-one. Yep. So I'm gonna say shout out to Hampton for that. Right. Another rivalry <laughs> game. Yeah, another rivalry much. game. Anti those in the overtime. Had to go in overtime to beat Division Two rival with Central State. Packed crowd, sold out stadium. You know. Big game as he comes out with the win. Uh, what's some more MEAC scores? Week two, South Carolina State beat the Citadel in state rivalry 23 to 20. Um, Townsend still, I think it's 11 years in the row now, has beaten Morgan State for the greater Baltimore uh rivalry because you know they're both in Baltimore, right yeah. 14 to 9. Man, Morgan State just can't get no offense. They can't get nothing. They, moving, can't, get nothing moving, they can't get nothing. Um, and Howard beats Maryhurst, uh, school in the NEC, thirty-two to thirty-one. Uh, week two, some other games. The Swag, they played a lot of you know money games. So they ain't really worth talking about right now. Yeah, they got clobbered. Yeah, it was bad. They got clobbered. This week, week three. Is there? You know what I'm saying? We're gonna start. With some games. There's some big games out here. You know, Howard played Morehouse inside Midlife. Oh, word? Yeah, the classic game inside Midlife. Oh, Heard they had about 30 something thousand people there. Um, 35 to 21 over Morehouse. 
you know, it used to be an old school. It's called the Ivy League series. Um, because of like the two yeah. black Ivy Leagues. Yeah. yeah, so they played at MetLife. Big class game. Heard they had like 32,000 people there. That's a great crowd. Damn, and that's a game. Like. That's a game. That's a good game for up north. Because up, there's no, after eight, there ain't many issues up north. The highest one is that's Delaware. Del, that's Dell State. Yeah, Dell State. So it's good for the people in New York to get to see HBCUs, the grass, get to see HBCU bands. Because mm-hmm. HBCU football games is about the football game, but it's more just the pageantry. It's the tailgates, it's the bands. And if you're in the Midwest, up north, out west, you don't get to see them that much. So these classic games give them a chance to see each other. Um, again, Morgan State played Iowa, Ohio. FBS opponent out the mat couldn't score any points, so they lost 21 to 6. Right there. I'm sorry, the Morgan State can get some I mean, offense. Like said, they defense keep them in the game. Yeah, no like, question. So they're like, they get some offense. They're scary. That's a scary opponent. Um, Game that, you know, Story. everybody, I ain't going to talk about it too much. Let's talk about it. You Let's know, about the it. Battle of the Bay at Norfolk State versus who? Against Hampton. Big Hampton. You know, Hampton breaks the streak of Norfolk State. Big Hampton, not the little. You know what I'm saying? We beat them last year. Not the, ooh, pass talk. <laughs> we the pass. Yeah, yeah. Hampton, Hampton um, wins that game 37-7. to 7. It wasn't even close. It wasn't even close. It was like 16, was it? Like, I think the closest was like 16 zip at halftime. And then we just came back out and <laughs> whooping that ass, whooping that ass, whooping that ass. Um, I watched the game, you know what I'm saying? Almost went. <laughs> Glad I didn't. I would have been cussing. Um, Chris Bazellis, 20 for 25, 185 yards passing. You know, the Hampton basically did what they wanted to do. Ran for 227 yards. Basically beat Norfolk State their own game. Ran it straight down the middle. We couldn't stop it. And we only had a total offense of 106 yards. Yeah, we didn't play good. But it's okay, though, because our quarterback is off suspension. And he's coming back. And everything is still in front of us. But shout out to Hampton. Hampton has, I never, I never shot away from saying Hampton has a good team. Hampton does have a decent team. I think they'll be competitive in the CAA. Don't like they beat us, but with that, I do think Hampton has to figure out what quarterback they want to use. If they're going to use Zellis, yeah, the yeah. runner, or you're going to use Malcolm Mays, the passer. There you go. Um, Elijah Burris is as advertised since he got to Hampton. Low key might be a quick undrafted free agent and make somebody team yeah. very good out of, out of Gastonia. North Carolina, Carolina. Yeah. you know what I'm saying? Christopher Zellis, Greensboro, North Carolina. Come on, Hampton. AT. Hampton is Hampton is really uh, up since the last coach. I know the coach that resigned, but it's really up. Not when when we was around. Mm-hmm. Hampton had a lot of New Jersey guys, yeah, up North Maryland North. guys. The Hampton team is a bunch of North Carolina, Virginia guys now. Offensive line look good. Good team, good team. I think North State. I really think it's not the fact that we're a bad team. I think we just didn't come to play. I don't know what happened. We were flat. I don't know how you're not ready to play a rival. Biggest game, one of the biggest Battle games Bay. of the year. In the Battle Battle Bay, Bay. Yeah, yeah. in front of twenty five thousand fans. We just beat Virginia State. Other rival come to Hampton. Hampton played their rival in Union. It is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Now can Hampton do the sweep? And beat Howard again for the eleventh time. Gotcha. And one thing never can never happen with North State. We never let y'all beat us ten times. Bro. Bro. That's crazy. <laughs> well, it's that it's that is right. So you come off the Virginia Union dub, big dub. Go off North State dub. Mm-hmm. You know, you clean up. Coach game with Morgan. It, 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 okay. Lost to Morgan, but you came back with Clay. Right. So you need these early Miac swag. You know, competition because you once we get into conference play, it's up. This it ain't ain't no room to play. Ain't over the place. So the decision you uh, the decision you talked about at quarterback that has to be nailed down with yeah. some reps in. Yeah, you know, so ain't no room to play once you get the CAA play. So we need this keep the momentum going. But by all means, <laughs> <laughs> belt, belt to ass. Let's do it. It was a uh, thing. Uh, speaking of other CAA plays, and my parents gonna hate it. They was there, but I'm gonna talk about it anyway. Delaware beats Ant forty two to thirteen. You know, they couldn't uh, – Delaware State scored – I mean, Delaware, not Delaware State, Delaware scored every time they had the ball. They had their quarterback went 23-41, 325 yards, one tub. A&T let them run for 200 yards on them. A&T, A&T game, the game was close at half. Mm-hmm. a has to find a way to meaningfully move the ball through the air, and that team would be better. I think the defense gets tired because they're on the field so much. Yeah. But – um. You know, Antique going to a big game next week. Got to go to Durham and play Central. 
Big rivalry game. Uh, the Aggie yeah, Classic. Yeah. And then after that, they got to play South Carolina State. Another big rivalry game. So, you know, everything is starting to line up now with games that if you are part of HBCU land, mm -hmm. if you're not, like losing the Central is like uh, State losing to Carolina yeah. or Duke losing to Carolina. Losing the Central, it might, might even more. It might even be even more entrenched. Losing the Central gets you fired. Losing to Hampton get you fired. Losing to Northern State if you're a Hampton side get you fired. That's right. You know what I'm saying? So these games are very important games. So I find a state ANT. Big Robert used to play in Charlotte every year at the um, at the Panther Stadium. Yeah. I went to that. So now we're getting the games. We're not playing money games no more. We ain't playing conference games just yet. Nah, but know. these games are games that to your alumni yeah. mean a lot. How you paying your mortgage? That's what you're trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> like, you mess around and you lose, like you said, you about to go on, you on the road, right, for Howard? Well, it's a classic game in yeah. D.C., so it's a yeah. classic. Yeah. 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 So you go up to Howard and this streak has been alive. You mess around and lose that, bro. What are we talking about? It's bragging rights. What and are you talking about? And it's even bigger than that. Like, Hampton North State recruit the same players. Anti Central recruit the same players. There you go. So if you want to beat your rivals, so then when you go talk to these kids, you can get, you know what I'm saying, you're recruiting against the people. That's, and that's, that's, that's just big for the alumni. You're talking about family separate. It's like, People that are married, husband went here, wife went here. My family, my wife, Hampton, North State. Yeah. Man, her, she don't even watch the game. We're talking junk ever yeah, since. Came in that room loud. I got cats. I got cats. DM me. You know they ain't watch the game. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they heard from them forever, man. Dog. Hey, you come, but you gather on that TV for the Battle of the Bay, though. <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a couple, there's a couple games like you said, uh, and I'm about to ask you a question here in a second. But there's a couple games throughout the year you circle back and you kind of follow. Even if you can't watch it, you kind of follow them like, hey, hey, no, we got North State this week. Yeah, yeah that's some games. We got, we got Howard this week. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, we, we, hey bring it home. Bring it home. Yeah. But my question I want to ask you is, how often is this as early in the season? If I, my memory serves me correct, this is more like, it's not homecoming time. Yeah, it's, it's so early it's now because it's, it's not a conference game anymore. So right. Hampton has to play us early if we're going to play each other if we're both a different conference. If we're losing the same conference, you could play it later because it's a conference mm -hmm. game. So just like the Aggie Classic um, used to be a conference game to play at the end of the year every year. But now the Central and T in different conferences, you got to play it earlier. Mm -hmm. Same South Carolina State, actually before the Aggie Classic when Central was Division Two, South Carolina State and T used to play the last game of the season every year. So like, the rivalries look different. They got to be played earlier because the conferences the conference are kind of like, yeah. mixed up. But, you know, it don't take it away. It's still going to be packed, sold out, stadiums, show out. bands, tailgate, good time. Rivalry games are only second to homecomings. Point by period. Rivalry games are only second to homecomings. And the energy is still up at both of them. Yeah. They, you know, no matter what. Like, like I said, those classics that you're talking about, the energy is up. Exactly. It's up. No, no matter if we if we cross the tunnel or we here, yeah. you know what's up. Yeah, so it was um good things. I got some great games coming up, so don't miss it out every Saturday morning. I dropped the HBCU games you should watch. I tell you when it's happening, where you can watch it. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't know. Every, on IDK Sports 523, you know saying? Ain't it I. don't miss. <laughs> Ain't I. It don't miss. So you ain't got to know what it is. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you what games to watch. The five games to watch. Tell you, you know what I'm saying? So if you didn't watch it, we missed out. It's on you, my son. Yeah, I some, got some swag love, too. You know what I'm yeah, saying? So we're going to some swag love. Um, Jackson State plays Southern in the Boombox Classic at Jackson. Jackson State ran the ball all over 33 to 15. Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody ran the ball. I think Jackson State ran for like, hold on, ran for 201 yards. Everybody ran. Everybody it, had a tub. Everybody had a tub. <laughs> um, Southern tried to make it a game at the end, but it really got a hand early, and Jackson dominated that game. Um, big win, Grambling winning against um, Texas A&M Commerce, another FCS team, thirty-five to twenty-eight in overtime. Looked pretty good, Grambling. I saw him saw the game late. Grambling had the preseason swag player of the year, Miles Crawley. Mm -hmm. Did pretty good. I think Grambling has a really good team. New coach, Mickey Joseph, um, the longtime coach. He was the running back coach in Nebraska, and now he's the head coach. Did pretty good. Um, Big win for Grambling going into the Jackson State game next week at Grambling. So, good reason to get them both teams with a win. Meeting up next week. Hey, told you. Told y'all be going to the game. What I say? It'll be a power move for each team. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know, so, who's to say what might shake out? But it's shaking up pretty good. Pretty good. Um, Alabama State couldn't do it with in-state rival Sanford. 
in Alabama, lost 12 to 7. Alabama State has a good defense. Quarterbacks, both quarterbacks got hurt, so they're doing with a true freshman. Chief, hard to win with a true freshman, man. Hard to win for sure. Um, the Heritage Classic played in Memphis between Tennessee State and Arkansas Pine Bluff. Tennessee State wins that 41 28. Arkansas Pine Bluff tried to keep it close, but Tennessee State just just a better team. Don't worry about it. Just a better team. Um, everybody else in the sweat playing money games. Ain't nothing really to talk about. Um, so now we get into the meat and potatoes of the college football season. Um, before I go too far, we'll talk about some of the games. We'll talk about week three games because week two in the FBS was nobody really playing nobody. Yeah. Um, saw some games that surprised me. South Carolina should have beat LSU. And now, if you were watching that game, South Carolina yeah. had them. That's it. That was that, that late yeah. pick. Yeah. <laughs> South Carolina had them. Now, South Carolina. Scary team in the SEC. Went to Kentucky. We'll get to them with Kentucky's ass. Played LSU. Should have beat them. Then we have the SEC. We we'll gonna get to. I'm gonna get to like my conference breakdown real quick. South Carolina defense ain't no joke. They gonna have between them, Kentucky, and uh, them Kentucky, and of course Georgia always gonna be mentioned, yeah. and even uh, Ole Miss. Yeah. They gonna have some some people come April, come April, come draft time. They got some recruits on their team. That team, they just damn teams. for damn sure that South Carolina team. They got some, they got some ballers. Uh, they can hoop. Wisconsin, um, Alabama, Alabama first real test. Went up there and whipped their ass. I mean, really, that's all I can say. Jalen Miller on twelve for seventeen, very efficient. One ninety six, three tubs. Easy. It's a very efficient game. Like they never, it never was a problem for Alabama. Um, against a Wisconsin team in Wisconsin, they're not easy to win games there. Mm -hmm. Same as you want to say about Wisconsin not being right, not easy to win there. Um, who else? Mizzou Boston College caught the rerun on that game last night a little bit. I watched a little bit today too. Um, great game. Mizzou's a sneaky sleeper to maybe make an SEC championship game. Mm. Maybe they rank number six in the nation. They play good defense. They got probably one of the best receivers in college football. Burning, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then also on the other side, Boston College is a sneaky pick to win the ACC. Right, I say because they put the beats on. Uh, what's that? Florida State at the Every, top. Everybody. <laughs> 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 but that them two teams fighting out. Mizzou has not said they got a good defense. And they have an explosive wide receiver. Like I said, probably the best wide receiver in college football. I would say. Um, and they and they play good against a physical Boston College team. Boston College, that's why I like Boston College games. They went to Mizzou and almost beat them. So both teams showed me something that may be sneaky picks in conference play. They'd be like, whoop, dang, is that Mizzou at the top of the thing? Is that Boston College in the ACC championship game? And I'm going and I'm gonna add to it just to stick on the SEC side. Just the way scheduling is out this year, yeah. Like teams like let's say just talk. I'm gonna start with Georgia. Georgia and Bama play at the end of September. And Georgia got to play Texas. You know what I'm saying? So that these teams that we talking about, where Mizzou, it might be believable because the first thing I heard when you said it was like ah, Mizzou, but as things get to shake out, that man building the program. Yeah, it, 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 it might be some. It might be smoke in the city. Come come late October, early November time. It's gonna be SEC is gonna be crazy. We're gonna get into the breakdown of the conference. I really want to do a deep dive in some of it because I got some taste. I don't know if people like, especially people in the Midwest, but we'll get to it. Um Notre Dame was mad with Purdue's ass. That was crazy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, come off was that Northern Illinois? Mm -hmm. Come off of Northern Illinois uh, and think shit sweet. The funny thing <laughs> about this game, old Miss beats Wake Forest 40 to 6, right? Mm -hmm. I think they came to Wake. They did. They came to Wake. They beat Wake Forest so bad that Wake Forest supposed to be as paid the one million dollar buyout fee not to play them next year at Ole Miss. That's crazy. No, because we ain't talking about no FBI. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't talking about them D two school. No, nah. we ain't talking about nah. this ain't no money ball. This, nah. no, this is oh damn. They paid the million dollars not to go back to Oxford. Said, nah, y'all good, y'all got it. Hey, no, no, we learned. different nah, nah, we learned. We'll, we'll, we'll go play, uh, we'll we'll play uh, Appalachian State. <laughs> Lane Kiffin said, come on. <laughs> come on, come on uh, back. But Ole Miss, another sneaky team. I don't know if their defense can hold up, but uh, Jackson Dart, 
I like him at a quarterback. One of the few yeah, he's one of those, uh, I like. One of those dual threat kids. Uh, yeah, 26 two. for 34, 377, two touchdowns. As long as he makes the throws, Lane going to draw it up. Yeah. Lane going to draw it up. Yeah. And I'm talking about Lane maybe taking some job. Maybe. Talk to my dad about it. Uh -huh. He brought it up. But we'll talk about that later. Okay. Um, Let's yeah. review some more scores. Um, Texas did they thing. The game that was – that was surprising with the Georgia Kentucky game. That game was a game, mm -hmm. and this fueled to tell me that Carson Beck ain't no in it. Carson Beck is not a top pick. Let's say it like that. He's on a really good team. Mm. All right. So keep in mind, right? We talking. We talking draft eval. Yeah. So fifteen it, for twenty four for one sixty. Also, so we talking no clubs. So winning percentage, right? Yeah, that does that is a value, but the way drafting is going now, how many NFL level throws did he make in that game? How many did he make? That so that was a, that was a late post, or at least uh, that late post mm -hmm. that he threw. That was an NFL level throw. That's the one that like, okay, he put enough on tape. I think that, I don't think he's the best in this class. No, that's what he was trying to say. Yeah, that's what not, that's what I'm saying. He yeah. probably, I think Jackson Dart is better than him. Agreed. I think Quinn Evans is better than him. Agreed. I damn sure think Shadu is better than him. Agreed. I damn sure think Cam Ward is better than him. Now, he may make life around cats like, uh, what's your boy out there at Oregon? Oh, Gabriel? John Gabriel. <laughs> yeah, no. You know, so you're looking at another it's draft. Like, it's like you. Bogue next 2.0. <laughs> but you're looking at another <laughs> draft and your boy down there in UCF. Um, Kyle Jefferson? Yeah, he's a project, though. <clears throat> he's one of them jokers that can come and be, um, and be that guy that like plays real good in pro, and mm -hmm. he didn't know he was that nice. Right. Yeah. But so this may very well be another draft where you're talking about that yeah, easy five, five to six quarterbacks can go up before in your top fifteen. Yeah. That's what that's what I'm getting at. It's like, hey, if you tell me that the likes of this sound, this is gonna be some hate. But if you tell me the likes of like JJ McCarthy or a Bo Nix can go in your top fifteen, and you see what they're doing though, right? And you see. Well, my boy Sam Donald, it must have put a fire in the Sam Donald's ass. Z bro. Right. But we gonna get into that later. But I'm, we, <laughs> but I'm saying, I said, I'm that down. I said, what? quarterback play is the where is at the point now. We need somebody, anybody, everybody. A little, a little, we need a, a little side note take because I talked to my dad about. It. He says, "No, you ain't big on Jalen Monroe." I'm not, but. My, my dad said, my dad said he gives Jalen Monroe kind of got that Dak in college in him. Okay. And Dak came to pro as a runner and developed into what Dak is now, which is a good quarterback. I mean, I know people hate on Dak, but Dak is a good quarterback in the NFL. He is. And remember, Dak had one of the six right in the top five. When yeah, Dak he, was he made some good teams while he was up there, too. Came there, took out, to, retired Tony Romo. Yeah. And I think Jalen, that though I thought about it, Jalen Monroe and Dak is a is a big comparison. Kind of, I don't want to say Jalen Hurts, I think he throws a little bit better in college than Jalen Hurts did in college. Yeah. We're talking, about, we're talking about Bama Jalen Hurts or Oklahoma Jalen Hurts? Well, Oklahoma, well, Rick has been playing the Big 12 around the Open. <laughs> and he has CD. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> everybody, and Marquise. Everybody yeah. was open. <laughs> everybody was open. But, um, this is a little th side thought, but Georgia, Kentucky, Kentucky's another – SEC is going to be scary. We're going to talk about it. Yeah. Um, what was the game? Big game Friday night on September 13th, which I think is, is for the – is going to be maybe another Big 12 championship game, was Kansas State and Arizona. Mm. That was – Kansas State put it on them, mm -hmm. but I don't – I still think Arizona's a decent team, a good team. And I think you're looking at so they don't have the vision. I think you're gonna look at that as another at the end of the year the Big Twelve Championship game. Mm. I think them are the two best teams in the Big Twelve, in my opinion. But you know, thirty-one to seven, um, that Kansas State won the first battle. I mean, won that battle against them. They couldn't run the football. Arizona couldn't run the football. The receiver uh, of Arizona what had eleven receptions. What's his name? This him? Nick Miller? Um, yeah, this hell. Oh, uh, tutorial. Tutorial, yeah. yeah, yeah I don't know. 11, like 11, 11 receptions, 138. But the reason why he gets all these you know him and his um, quarterback have been playing together for forever. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Since Pop Warner. I think they transferred together. Together here. So um Yeah. And he and a guy like that, man, especially at the collegiate level, he he's a he's a high weight speed freak, bro. Like it's it, it's it's only so much you can do with somebody that's that athletic. But um, you know, that you don't really find an equalizer for that until uh-huh. you get to the pro green. Mm-hmm. Uh but cats like Luther Burden, you know, like you mentioned out there in Mizzou. Uh, he he has like that all around game now where he's just like okay he he gonna make some hay he gonna make some hay early whereas like you know everybody can run at the pro level everybody can jump everybody can you know there's there's too much technique floating around at the pro level yeah. to where some of that you know where that stuff he's getting off now at Arizona and in the Big Twelve where that's that's gonna be shut down come Sunday come you on think Sunday. so you think he I I think I think he makes a lot of wild catches he makes a lot of spectacular catches. But um, that's not that's not life in the NFL. Even your boy, uh, your Marvin Harrison Jr. You know that first game where he was, you know, he was open on some plays, but it, it, comes, it comes at a slow pace. But just like here in week two, you find a two touchdowns, one thirty. It's like okay, there we go, <laughs> there you go. But uh, and that's with Marvin Harrison, and we knew what he was freshman year yeah. in Ohio State. So um, a guy like McMillan that's, you know, kind of, you know, having his name thrown around a lot more, I think um, I, I think it might catch up to him a little bit. Kind of like a mm, – I ain't going to do him like that. I was about to say Quentin Johnson. But, that's crazy. <laughs> but he uh, he has some talent. Ain't taking it from him, but it's, it's going to slow it's gonna slow his track down here uh, here in the next couple uh, years or so when he hits the league. Yeah. So what I wanted to do um, before we go on the pro – in college, from what I've seen so far, I wanted to give some early takeaways, especially, especially with the conferences. I really think, okay, the SEC is head over here the best conference this year. Head over here. Nobody's even close. Top to bottom, SEC is the best conference. Yeah. Texas is the best team in the nation. Heads to heels. I don't think it's nobody. I, don't, I think yeah. I think they're going to – I think Georgia – don't, don't they got to come – Georgia got to come to Texas? That team is different. That team is built. They, they, they strong. They, they built fast. They built for the long haul. Yeah. And they, they swag is up. The yeah. juice, the juice in that program is up right and now. And I think I think that uh Georgia's gonna have a rough time for them. But SEC is just just heads over hill better. The next best conference is to be announced. I do not think the Big Ten is like that. I think Michigan is not that good. No. I think this is a year no. where you might see an Iowa. Go to the championship game. This might be a year where you might see it. Like another Penn State might go. I don't know how Ohio State is. Ohio State ain't played nobody yet. Yeah. Well, Michigan's not that good. Penn the State. teams out west. USC could win this conference. Yeah. Because Oregon ain't it. Yeah. They beat Oregon State. Washington lost to Washington State. Penn State just had a. They had a huge pull out all their bags of tricks this week too. So like you know, Indiana, yeah, beat the brakes off UCLA. Yeah. Took them behind the woodshed. You know what I'm saying? Um, what's it called Michigan only beat what Arkansas State 28-18. You know what I'm saying? So the dominance of the Big Ten, I think the Big Ten is not is not it. And I really, really could say that the Big Twelve might be the next best conference with the teams they have. Yeah. SEC is just so much better. It's gonna be rough to win. I do. I don't think nobody's gonna go undefeated in the SEC. Texas has the best chance, but like you said, I said that Mizzou's like that. Mississippi is good. Yeah. Um, Georgia is good. South Carolina's shown they can beat anybody. Yeah. Kentucky's gonna beat somebody. Yeah. Tennessee mm-hmm. with Nico. Nico. Yeah. And that offense that they run. They're gonna run into a. Somebody's gonna, it's run gonna into be a, rough. Somebody gonna run into a bus. So you got a score to keep up with them. Ole Miss at that. Somebody gonna run into a bus, so yeah, so Ole Miss and um Ole Miss Tennessee coming up, I think. Is that next week? That's not next week, that's a big rivalry game. Mm-hmm. Um no. but the SEC, SEC too dangerous. going down to Arkansas, Arkansas done changed they still got a better quarterback. I mean, not a better quarterback, but they kind of think the quarterback that they want. Yeah. And that's going better for them. Who played that? Arkansas Auburn or Arkansas killed them. Um Mizzou Vandy. Tennessee, Oklahoma. At Oklahoma next week, 7.30 on ABC primetime game. It's going to be a good game. We're going to see if Oklahoma made up. We're going to see if Oklahoma's an SEC team or not. If they had, Steve Sarkeesian has built that team to be an SEC team. He recruited like that. 
That team is an SEC football team. Yeah. SEC. Is Oklahoma that yet? Yeah. yeah. If Oklahoma beat Tennessee, they might be. SEC is a is a damn landmine, bro. The way it's plotted yeah. out now, it's a damn landmine. The Texas has to play Oklahoma in that big rivalry. They gotta play Georgia right after. Them. Yeah, that's rough. It, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be blood no matter where you go. That's what I'm saying. Like yeah. it's, just, it's so much of a landmine because you you can get popped no matter like each weekend and week out just because of the level of competition is there. It's like. Two weeks from now, Georgia, Alabama. Man, that's what I'm saying. You still got Georgia that got going, that on, going on the road. Got Ole Miss at uh, Kentucky. I mean, Kentucky at Ole Miss. Yeah. Stop Arkansas A&M. Stop it. So it's, rough, it's, too, it's too rough down there. That's rough. It's too rough. And Missoula at and m three weeks from now. Ole Miss at South Carolina. That's a scary game. Man. I think old, after that, South Carolina play um, Ole Miss go to LSU at night. Right. And it's so robust with just talent and competition that come playoff time, you you still we still kind of get it wrong because one of those teams should be in there. Come playoff time, I'm telling you, you it's still got to get it wrong. SEC is by far. I think the Big Twelve is next. I think the Big Ten is not that good. This is a year where I this is the year Penn State gonna win this year. It might be Ohio State, but this the Penn State gonna do it this yeah, year. This will be the year where they oh, um, they got to, you know. You know what I'm saying? Last thing to talk about, about college before we zoom on to the people that get paid. The state of Florida, man. Uh, yuck. You I saw my You said, yeah, I heard that the alumni raised the money to five months for 26 mil to find yeah. that dude now. Is it Nobel? Uh, nah, um, Napier. Napier, okay. Out in Florida. You know what I'm saying? Because Florida, you know, <laughs> ain't good. It ain't good. It's not okay. It's not okay. <laughs> it's not okay. But because you, I mean, it's too many. Uh, that's too story of a of a program to have a showing like that, bro. Way too story. And you lost a lot of that. You lost, I know. I get the transfer portal. I get. I heard the cries on social media from what the transfer portal did to Florida, but yet and still, you could have same transfer though. You you also you also Florida. So ain't nobody's robbing from your cupboard, bro. Like, I get what you're trying to say, but you're still Florida. You're still Florida State. Ain't nobody taking, ain't nobody stealing from you in broad daylight. Yeah. The, the talent always going to be there for you. The, and y'all not begging for no spot in anybody's school, in anybody's recruiting pipeline. Mm-hmm. But you guys are always going to be there front row, uh, dead center. So miss me with that. Miss me with your tears. The, the product that y'all putting out now, that you're putting out now, piss poor. And don't tell me you didn't see this coming with all with all the TV deals that's been floating. Don't tell me you didn't see this coming with the conference play that's been uh, uh, with the uh, shifting conference play. You can't. This, this has been knocking at your door for a while, for a few years. Mm-hmm. So stop it. Yeah, Florida. Stop it. Florida. I think Florida State. They were different between Florida State and Florida is. I think Florida State when we got some transfers, just ain't meshing. It ain't meshing. And I give him Bell. He went undefeated last year. He'll get another year. Everybody will say don't fire him. They're not gonna fire him. He'll get another year. He went undefeated. Should have been in the playoffs last year. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So um sometimes it works. That's how the transfer port is. This, this is the good and the bad side of the transfer portal. Like I said a long time ago. You got Dabo who don't use the transfer portal, and Novell who did, and the transfer. Sometimes transfers don't mesh. Mm. And now where's the culture at to get you out of this slump? Right. So um a couple of names that like I'm talking to my pops about it. Uh, they fired Mark Bill Napier. Who they get? Florida go get another group of five or lower power five, power four coach like uh, the guy from Ohio State. Say the guy from Vandy if he do good, or somebody like that. Or do they go get a name? Because Florida is a big time name. Yes, sir. So some names that we floated around was Lane Kiffin, yes, and then I was like, well, at first I said, well, Lane Kiffin was he really going to leave if Lane Kiffin? Didn't take the Alabama job. Pop told me, you think that you really think the Alabama offered Lane Kiffin and he didn't take it? I said, touche. Don't think Lane Kiffin got offered the Alabama yeah. job. Yeah. No, you don't miss on that. Lane you Kiffin, don't miss on that. Now, it's a better recruiting opportunity for Lane Kiffin in Florida if he leaves Ole Miss Showing to, get already... kids to, Flo- to get kids come yeah. to Florida to Oxford. No disrespect. But it is what it is. The other man we floated around with James Franklin. How does his name stay on top of the heat, bro? Because he is a good coach. Penn State has rigorous 
educational standards, so they don't get everybody. Yeah, got that. You in um the Big Ten, the Big Ten, he he's always third in the Big Ten. The Big Ten has always been dominated by Ohio State and Michigan. Yeah. Yeah, Besides a couple of years, Joe, he still wins eight to ten games every year. Eight to nine every still, year. And he still pushes out NFL talent. And he pushes out NFL talent. He has played in the SEC, won at Vandy, can get better players at Florida. Don't have to worry about this um restrictions of the uh thing. The only thing I think is more with James Franklin, they ask him if he wants to do it. Because he can stay there and Penn State win nine games a year. Oh yeah, he can be and not go and they'd be fine with it. Well, they won't be fine with it, but the administration, the people that pay him will be okay with it. It won't like, oh, I'm gonna fire you because that boy can be Joe Paterno. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so like, or do you want to go deal with what's down there in Florida? The fan base still think Urban Meyer, Tim Tebow's running out the tunnel. Yeah. So, um, little two names that we floated around. Asked my dad. I also said, if you're looking for a coach, coach, I said, what about David Shaw? I called David Shaw. I don't know if David Shaw's an SEC guy. What was out West guy? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Um, it's all about who can recruit. Do you give Gus Malzahn at UCF? Call, and yeah. a call had a one two conference championship to Auburn to Nick Marshall and them to the to the uh they went to the BCS National Championship game mm-hmm. the So, but you know with Gus, it's gonna be good or it's gonna be bad. He's gonna be a bad season. Yeah. But you know, with that style of play, physical run game, as long as you get a defense, they're pretty good. So um there's some names that float out there, but I think Bill Napier is the home. Yeah, yeah. I can I can see that lane fit though. Lane Lane got the swag to 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 mesh well with oh, that yeah. with that environment. Uh, but then we leave Oxford, where they're happy to be fourth yeah. in the SEC. Yeah, but it's also much to say about like, damn, I see what you did at Oxford too. Yeah, I mean, yeah, 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 that too. But like, he can say, "Oh, listen," and win eight, seven games, yeah, and keep doing the same eight, thing that you do at Florida. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it, it's all about that's just some names I'm throwing out. They might probably go a whole different way because again, I don't want to talk about it. Really. <laughs> Oh, um, okay. I didn't see uh, what's that hire for Alabama? The, what's his name? The board from from Washington? Washington. Yeah, I didn't see that coming. So they, like he said, they can be somebody from from West West Hell that could end up with that job and might uh, proving us all wrong. So yeah, mm-hmm. who knows? Who knows? So going in the NFL, the pros, people that get paid money. Uh, we won good kickoff. You know, Chiefs Ravens, great kickoff game. Mm-hmm. Lamar played lights out, had with almost 300 yards, total offense by itself. Mm-hmm. Um, just could some way the Chiefs just always beat them. I don't know what it is about the Ravens and the Chiefs. He's got their number, bro. Yeah, 27 he's 20. Got your number. Um, probably the early two games were the best two games of the week one. You know, y'all out there in Brazil, um, found a way to win. You know what I'm saying? I think uh, Green Bay kind of started slow when y'all came out, jumped on them. And I think they could never, they couldn't get back from it. You know, so they were trying to work their way back in, but y'all was. I mean, there was there was a couple lead changes. It was um, just, like you said, it's early. Nobody mm-hmm. playing. Nobody, well, nobody was playing preseason, so missed tackles. It was sloppy. So there was a couple lead changes, um, but the tough shall endure, and I think that's what happened. It's mm-hmm. just uh, whoever made. Well, how can I say this? <laughs> whoever made the last mistake usually is what shot themselves in the foot. Like, mm-hmm. you know, try to keep them, uh, keep them in the game. And Jalen, for damn sure, oh, he could have, he could have sealed our fate real early. He and threw, that, he threw two, but he could have had four. Yeah, and that's what I want to get. So I'm gonna go from the Packers side, since you're the Eagles fan, so you probably watched a little bit closer. Jordan Love is advertised as advertised. Hope he gets healthy. Hope he comes back soon. But Jordan Love is as advertised. Damn, damn good quarterback. As advertised. Josh Jacobs to this team changes every. I know Aaron Jones was good, but Josh Jacobs changes this offense. His breakaway, another good Bama quarterback too. I know I said about Jameer Gibbs, but another good Bama yeah, quarterback. quarterback yeah. But Josh Jacobs is a, is your perfect style. He he's a physical runner, but he also can get loose a little bit too. Mm-hmm. And these receivers are growing up. Right before you know, like Jay Reed is working his way to be a top receiver. The way his speed is. Uh, where he can run routes a little bit, yeah. speed. Uh, Romeo Dobbs makes the tough catches. Christian Watson, Christian Watson gets you know, explosive. Ten and in defense, you already know the, the, the Packers defense is going to be decent. Mm-hmm. I mean, um, and, and and out of that out of that Sean McVay tree, Matt Lafleur is the best one out of that tree. Mm-hmm. But he's really from the Kyle Shanahan tree, though. Yeah. So he has the best of both. That's why they can run the ball and they pass the ball. Like he kind of takes best of both, but. 
out of that tree, Matt LaFleur, and I know everybody says Zach Taylor, but Zach Taylor got Joe Burrow on home against you. Um, <laughs> um, just, just, I like the Packers. I think the Packers, I think the NFC North is going to be challenged, especially with the way Sam Darnold playing right now, especially with the Lions. Yeah. And Green Bay, and once Jordan come back, man, the NFC North. Uh, man, it's going to be It's going to be tough. It's gonna be tough, and I'm, I'm gonna stick with the Packers too. Another good, another good coach. If he does, if he does this for the Vikings. Another good coach in that Sean McVay tree. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause, because the job, he, the job, especially goes, if Kirk Cousins look like shit. Yeah, and the job, <laughs> and the job, and the, and the back it up. The job he's going with Sam Darnold. Yeah, so Sam Darnold put a Kirk Cousins on Kirk Cousins like shit. Is it who is it? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah go yeah, ahead. I'm, I'm the, right, I'm right, right, I just right. wanted to say that that's yeah, that damn good coach. I would say this for the Packers. Jordan Love is not season ending, so fans again miss me with your tears. It's football; things happen. Yeah, it's a long season. You know what I'm saying? It's a long season. You know, four, you know, four, four or five weeks, we right back in contention. It's yeah. just a matter of staying afloat. Yeah, and, and I think but we, uh, in week two, Malik Willis won them, won that game. Yeah, uh, here in week two, the Packers just won. Yeah. So I'm not saying he's Jordan Love. Don't get me wrong, but. Uh, Y'all, y'all got some time. Y'all got enough time to make them uh, make that money back. But to Anthony's point, the NFC North is great. Even the Bears got hope. <laughs> the Bears got hope. They got a stack roster. You know what I'm saying? So the, I just want to talk about the Vikings, bro. I did not <laughs> see them starting out 2-0. And, oh, and, again, some damn good competition, too. So, like, uh, they this coming off a dub they, today. They, they beat the Giants. We won. Beat the Giants. And then they turned around today. Just to in case the you 49ers. thought. Just in case you thought it was a fluke. They beat the 49ers, Um, you know, seventeen for twenty six, two sixty eight. A tub ran the ball for one forty six. Jefferson did Jefferson type things. Yeah. And the Forty ers didn't play bad. So they really just beat them. Mm-hmm. Forty Nineers ran the ball. Brock threw for three nineteen. Forced some turnovers on defense. Forced some turnovers on defense and the and the. Yeah, no say everybody said the Giants win wasn't like that. Now you go beat the Forty Nineers. Now you two and zero. Oh. Go ahead. Though. Mm-hmm. Nah, I mean, it's it's more of that, and they got like a a, a perfect match because Aaron Jones is is putting up numbers on that Vikings offense too. You know he uh, he's he's showing proof as a good signing. Justin Jefferson, like he said, he, Jay Jettis is going to be. He's just gonna be him. And Jordan Addison hurt. You know what I'm saying? So you're not even operating at full at yeah. full strength right now. So the Vikings, I, I'm I'm still teetering on the side that they're contenders or pretenders right now. It's still very early. I think that's something we might get into come like week four, which you think might do yeah. something on that right. Like something like that. Yeah. They're a good team. Like, they like they're damn good team. Good team. NC North is gonna be a problem. Um since we jumping around saying like teams that impressed us both weeks. I got another one too. So you want to talk about your Eagles and how y'all played? Um, week one. Week one. Um, it, it, they left a lot. I shout out Saquon. Let's start there. Shout I was Saquon. wrong. I was wrong. I was wrong. <laughs> I was wrong. Saquon is that he him. <laughs> not the best back in the league, but a definitely an upgrade. He, he's not from, he's from not DeAndre. The best. He's not the best. I thought he wasn't going to be that I much know who I know who ain't the best either. <laughs> no, we can get into that whenever you're ready. Yeah. But um, oh, uh, Saquon, uh, he worth it. Yeah. Worth it. Worth every cent. That that offense was different. That offense was different. Now, see, the only thing, I, the, my biggest takeaway from the Eagles and Packers game week one uh-huh. is this. And we can move on from after this. Is that Jalen has to understand now that you got a guy like Saquon that you don't have it, you being Superman is no longer a requirement. Yeah, it wasn't a requirement to begin with. If you had the arm, t- if you had the talent of a Jordan Love, or um, what's my guy down there in Houston, uh, uh, CJ Stroud, that you you be over the moon. But <laughs> Jalen still has that need to play Superman uh, football, and that's not the requirement no more. You got a legit running back. You right? got you got weapons to your left and your right now. Yeah, let them eat. Yeah. Let them eat. Take the but that's not him though. He been the guy that's the runner. So when they when it's time like it's third and three and they call that that RPO, but I I want to pull it and take yeah, it. Yeah, myself. That's what and that's that's ingrained. But I think with the change of with Kellen Moore now running things or calling uh-huh. the plays, it's like, hey, bro, we're not even gonna give you that option no more. So um, 
let let the playmakers be the playmakers. You know, this it's gonna still show up in your stat box. Yeah. You know, but it doesn't require you to be that guy no more. Yeah. That guy. You don't. Because yeah. the Jalen that we are accustomed to, who when it's time for him to make that play, shows when he makes that scramble play for uh for a first down conversion, you know, or makes that fourth and three play that we need to convert to keep the time rolling in the fourth quarter. Like those plays, yes. But to you know, there's a few RPOs where it's like, bro, right, just give just give it to Saquon. Yeah. Right. No, because we save that toll because we gonna we had a long season ahead. Facts. But that's what that'll be our only takeaway, bro. Um, another team, I don't know if it surprised me, I think it surprised a lot of people. But this no, nah, the Steelers don't want back to back games. They are two and oh. And they are two and oh. <laughs> offense ain't nowhere to be found. <laughs> but they find ways to win. Beat beat the <laughs> beat the uh who they play last week? Uh beat the Falcons straight field goals. Yeah. 18-10, beat the Broncos, 13-6. Nah, that's, and you know who's smiling the most from those dubs? Mike Tomlin. That's like that's like his kind of game. Is like He likes them joints to be – He finds you know, a way to win. Them, them tough, gritty wins where – That defense is, is special. That they, defense. They built to All go. three levels of the defense. They built to go. It's ready to go. Offense got to come around and score some points eventually. He did, I mean, Justin, Justin Fields had a <coughs> bad game. Justin Fields was uh, 13 for 20, 117. The mm-hmm. tub ran the ball for 141. Najee had 17. Um, carried for 69 yards. You know, Broncos, Bo Nix, 20 for 35, 246, two picks. I don't know why they making him throw the ball so much. And they got Javante Williams. I don't know why they throw the ball so much. Sean Payton is. <laughs> anyway. Um, Steelers have surprised me for these past two weeks. I'm not even going to hold you. Steelers, I, didn't th- I did not have them 2-0 and was not on my middle card. I didn't think they were going to be like a horrible team, but I, th- I thought the Falcons was going to be a little bit better. Not surprised they beat the Broncos. And, and just to uh, add to that, I think – Here's here's something I'm gonna ask you. This is more a direct question. Is this is this like a, a I want to say a symptom, but like a byproduct of having that late QB battle all throughout offseason, all throughout training camp, where you don't have somebody. Uh, I just don't think they have. Knowledge. I yeah. just don't think Justin. I only have a dominant QB. Nobody that really. But nobody really reached out there and grabbed no, that I, QB. I think. I think. I think that. Wilson is hurt. I don't know what what Russell Wilson looks like. If decline is real, or he was just hurt and he had a bad. Man, I only had that bad of a year last year. I think Chopin just didn't like him, <coughs> or I'm not sure. But they knew that they had to stop people from scoring, and that's what they, they built. They built. They built a defense on all three levels that can stop people from scoring. Um, the other team that you know people thought it was a fluke the first week. They played Carolina the Saints. Be Carolina. 47 to 10. It's on the block. You know what I'm saying? Then they go down to Dallas. <coughs> 44 to 19. Got the 40 ball on. So, like, the Saints, that was one of my bill guard. To be maybe, I knew they'd be contenders in the NFC South because like, the NFC South ain't that great. Yeah. But they might be contenders, period. Yeah. Now, they, and again, we was uh, getting to that pretender, contender bag. I see them early as, oh, now they, they legit. Yeah, they're legitimate. Um, secondary is tight, and that's with an alien Marshawn Lattimore still. Yeah. Uh, defense, you know, you got edge rushers now. You got Chase Young. You got, you know, what I'm saying, even if they're not getting uh, getting to completely to the quarterback at this moment, they still getting hits. Yeah. So the defense is there. They getting turnovers. Um, Derek Carr. All right, I, I'm gonna start. There on that side, because I'm gonna I'm gonna get into Alvin Kamara here in a second. Mm-hmm. But their car, the I want to say rejuvenated or just more juiced up, ready to go this season. Mm-hmm. But he playing like he playing like he needs some respect on his name right now. Yeah, he he playing like I, I'm, I'm coming back to get everything I was owed right now. Like. um it was, it was that late trade, you know, getting out of uh, getting out of Oakland or Las Vegas, excuse me. Mm-hmm. You know, had to get himself settled down there in New Orleans. So last season was a uh, they were still, and that's the thing. Even at the end, New Orleans was still competitive towards the end of that season. Yeah. 
So it was just a matter of turning that tide. It was just like, all right. I think it was more of those things like, all right, y'all, we see what we can do. We see that we can play. We see that we are competitive. Yeah. You know, so it's a matter of that. We know we can, we can run with these guys. We can play, you know, up to any level of competition. This year is just starting off like picking up where they, you know, where they, uh, where they left off last year. It's just like, all right, we're not even gonna play with them from the, you know, from the first whistle. We going at them, yeah. And, and week one, week two, dropping bombs, which is where I switch over to Alvin Kamara. Alvin Kamara needed way more respect on his name to begin with. Yeah, way more respect on his name. He's up there. That is a mm, mm, that is a top in my book. That is a top. Three running back, and trust me, I I I know y'all got y'all got and Christian McCaffrey, but bro, trust me, if if you switch roles on for Christian McCaffrey in the Saints I'll and Al Kamara, like Al Christian. Kamara in the 49ers, nothing would change. Reason why I believe that Jordan Mason last week for the 49ers, how much he drop on them? Like how much he drop on the Jets? A lot of y'all, I ain't got him pulled up. Over 100, I think he went over 150 he dropped, he on the up, Jets. He Tell me what changes. Tell me what changes. I think that Christian McCaffrey being the best back in the league was premature when you got other jokers that's been putting in work. Christian McCaffrey used to hurt. Alvin Kamara's up there. Um, Alvin Kamara been doing the same thing Christian McCaffrey been doing. Yeah. Been doing the same thing. As far as dual threat. Been doing the same running thing. Running backs, yeah. And he's available more than Christian. Man, you just get he you get caught I think they got caught up in that Taysom Hill uh uh foolishness. But Alvin Kamara been that dog. Mm -hmm. Been that guy. Yes. Yeah, he uh proved it. And he proved it. Oh man yeah. he was uh doing his thing. Um quick thing before we leave quick takes uh or just a rookie update. I think Jaden Daniels is looking the best. Malik Davis had a good day, though. Still, 10 catches, 10 catches 120 yards, and tub. Um, Marvin Harrison got off the snide. Yeah. Had a bad week. Two tubs. Had two tubs. Uh, Caleb's playing right now. Um, we, we kind of recording and watching it. Uh, but Bo looks like I thought Bo would look. Sean Payton, the same guy that paid Taysom Hill all that money and convinced Sean Taysom Hill with some. You should be a great player. Yeah. And now they stuck with him. That's why they still using them. Yeah. Um early rookie. Early early rookie. rookie. I mean, y'all won't get too big off his line play, but Joe Alt for the Chargers oh. is doing this thing. Oh yeah. Because he locked down Max Crosby. Yes, yeah, sir. And yes, I mean, sir. I mean, Good sometimes pay the pay. Gotta pay get some offensive line. Now, yeah, you think about just moving forward. Uh, Rashawn Slater on one side, Joel on the other. Yeah, that's that was that reason why movie. the Chargers are what two and zero now. Yeah, and running the football, running the football really good. And oh. your boy J.K. looking like <laughs> looking fresh out there. Yeah, so so um, it, it pays. The trenches pay. Yeah, like I said, for the Commanders, the Commanders scary team in NFC East to me. Jaden is is very athletic. They got a good run game. Defense is is still working out some things, but. Mm -hmm. I think the Commanders is, is a sneaky good team. Um, like I said, the Bears with Caleb, we'll see. Time will tell. I think Bo and Broncos are going to be trash. It is what it is. Um, and then you got – I'm trying to think. I'm running my mind now of any, like, standout rookie performances. Um, I mean, I, I think at this point, Marvin – uh, I want to say that entire Arizona Cardinals team yeah. is a is a is a sneaky dog like a the sneaky pick yeah, right the now. I think that NFC West. That's what who I want to say. Who out there with them? Seattle, decent Arizona. Who out there? The Niners. Cause, I mean, because the Cardinals very well can be sitting here two and zero right now because they had a tough game with Buffalo. Buffalo. I mean, you know, that team. That team. Josh Allen is putting Buffalo on his back. Yeah, and that defense is playing really good. They're two yeah. and zero. A lot of y'all was like, "Wait, off stuff on Josh Allen is playing great football." And James and, Cook is too. Yeah, so, and they running the ball. Yeah, I'm just saying. You know, they, they didn't done it so well that cats like Keon Coleman ain't even getting touches yet. So, and that's before he started kicking. That's before he gets going. Because I think he will have his time. He's still, mind you, he's still a rookie. Yeah. And so let's let's get some credence there. But well, they're running the football. They are running the football. Yeah, they're running they the football. playing football. They they didn't have. No problems with the Dolphins uh, on Thursday night. No issues with yeah. them. 
But uh, just to jump back real quick, we can get out of here. Uh, Arizona. Arizona is legit. That's a legit. That's a that's a legitimate team, and they got and they gonna have some. They gonna have some issues for them. Uh, for the Niners here, and they still got you no. Know, Might still got to play the Seahawks too. Yeah. But Arizona with Kyler Murray, uh, Kyler Murray back and healthy. Yeah. And and I know we hyped on Marvin Harrison, but Michael Wilson out there is doing his numbers out there too. Yeah. And I hate to say it, but Jonathan Gannon. I, I owe you. I owe you an apology to an certain extent because you you got that defense play. You know oh, yeah. they, you got you got them rolling on defense too. I ain't gonna I ain't gonna take nothing from you. I ain't believe you because I'm a I'm a scorned Eagles fan. I'm a jaded Eagles fan. Well, he and, left. Yeah, and, well, he, yeah he left. but also people can't get, go on in the greener pastures. I, I, I blame I blame him a lot for that Chiefs loss in the Super Bowl. That's what I blame him a lot. Yeah, I don't hate let it go. I, I'm y'all win a game. It's a it's a healing process. Yeah. <laughs> a healing. Yeah, y'all healing. Yeah. I'm right. just keep getting open. I can't also By say five eight quarterback. Hmm. I'm sorry. Hmm. I'm just trauma. Hmm. Just trauma. <laughs> but well, <laughs> you mess me up. The only point is that uh, Arizona. Uh, I think I think they're legit too. They they gonna have they gonna have something to say towards the end of the season because I think. Um, uh, oh, it, it. It, it looked bad when the Eagles lost to the Cardinals last year, but there was also some points in that game. I was like, hmm. I, I, I think some of the some of the tricks they were using in that game could have worked in, against any opponent. So uh, I like the steam they built at the end of the year, and they're starting to show show his, his value here. So again, same thing with the Saints that I mentioned earlier this pod. Yeah, though that that steam or that momentum that teams pick up uh, from last year, and they start to build that momentum build that chemistry and it's starting to like bear value or bear fruit um here at the top of the season that's not a fluke that's not a fluke and and, and the good coaches that notice that yeah. and 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 uh I don't say how like kind of bring that to the for, forefront or just um build off that momentum that's when you know you got something that's when you know the formula is working yeah so Hats off to those teams, Saints, Cardinals, Chargers, uh, Vikings. Mm-hmm. Um, it adds parity to the league, and it's much needed. It's much needed. You know, on the AFC side, um, I get it. Mahomes going to be Mahomes. It's Mahomes magic. You know, we all know we got a face in the end. But at least on the NFC side, with the teams I just mentioned, Cardinals, Saint, uh, Cardinals, Saints, Vikings, um, we love to see it. We love yeah. to see. I love you know. I don't like seeing poverty franchises just staying and st- staying in poverty. <laughs> just because you know what I'm saying. At, yeah, at, yeah. Some, at, at some, some point, point let's get back. At some point, you gotta give your fans something to root for. They pay. They pay their hard earned money. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying. Give them something to root for. Yeah. So you know, that's really what NFL. You know, don't forget. You know, every Tuesday we drop the NFL power rankings. You know. On our IDK on the IDK Sports Pod Twitter Instagram page, and I post and we post it on YouTube too, so you can see what we thinking and who we think might be the best five teams in football right now. Before we get up out of here, on the last topic that we have on this recap episode, man, we know we had to recap a lot. Two weeks of college football, two weeks of uh, pro football. We can't forget that it was the Sweet Science, mm. the prize fight, Canelo. Fault this weekend, yes, and um, I ain't gonna lie, I'm gonna keep it a buck with y'all. I forgot, <laughs> <laughs> I forgot it was happening until I saw like the notifications come on my phone, so I ain't really like tap in too much because I was really watching a lot of college football. But Kenny, you know what I'm saying? That's why we get two of us, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Somebody else watched it, so I'm gonna let Kenny ice on you. Let you, um, you know what I'm saying? Tell us about you know a little bit of the undercard and tell us um about the fight, yeah, man. So, um, I, I'm gonna start here. That card, and mind you, this is with I was going to uh, fight night with the same understanding that Anthony had. I was like, it wasn't nothing that was really like on my radar to watch. I'm still like in college football mode, but I was like, I'm, you know, I'm like, oh yeah, let me turn on the fight and let me start watching some prelims and watch and see who's out there. And I'm sitting, I'm sitting back and I'm watching the undercard. You know, I'm like, okay, Roley's out there. <laughs> That was a, okay. That was a decent fight. He had a he had a uh, unanimous decision in ten, in ten rounds. 
Who was it? What? Rogan won. Rogan won. I told you, man, he got talent, bro. He didn't need to leave his manager. <laughs> Roly has. Rogan won. Rogan got talent, bro. Just and then, and then I'm like, okay, the Rogan fight go off. Yeah. I'm sitting back. Yeah. I'm like, Caleb Plant's up next. I'm sitting up in my seat. I'm like, oh, I ain't know Caleb was on this card. Yeah. And so Caleb played up next against McConkie. He had a stoppage in round nine. He had a standing KO. Uh, standing KO. Yeah, standing KO. Oh, bro, it was a show. Oh, Lord. Probably the easily fight of the night. That Caleb Plant and uh, McConkie fight. Easy fight of the night. The only thing about Caleb, I wish that like he had waited for some of the other fights. If if we were skinny fight, bro. If I, I'm gonna say this about Caleb, bro, and, and I know for sure, 100, percent you gonna agree with this next statement. Um. What was what was that uh, boxing game we used to play all the time? Fight night. Fight night. If it was fight night, Caleb Plant would have a ninety nine overall in heart. Yeah, yeah. He don't duck no fades, no fades. and he puts on a show every time. He yeah. well, he's likable because of the story and and that and that and he, he has heart. He, he is, ain't ducking no fades. When Canelo came yeah. calling, he went. If you he don't, called Benitez Fat Boy, he, he went. If you don't like. If you don't like a fighter like Caleb Plant, that hey, slap Charlo. Say, you you gotta like somebody that's about that action. Win, lose, or draw, you <laughs> about that action. That man for his girl. Yeah, yeah. All disrespect. And man, that man. <laughs> and, and I meant that. And I meant that disrespectfully. <laughs> <And> so, <laughs> that man apologized. Oh, how you long? He he cut from that club. Now you know it, he he's a fighter that doesn't really mesh well with this era because they. We still stuck in that 40, 30 and old, 40 and old. He ain't done no smoke and like he well, never been like even Canelo couldn't get him out of there. Canelo got him out of there with a body shot, but like still Canelo said that's one of his rougher fights. Brett, uh, he, he Benavidez was just a bigger dude. <laughs> he's he's your uh favorite spider, favorite fighter. Because if you're a boxing if you if you're a, if you're a, a boxing purist, you like Caleb. you like watching Caleb playing fight. And kind of like Caleb, it's kind of a couple guys like that. Caleb, Sean, Sean, yeah, um, he's another one. Um, Gary Russell, that just yeah, like, yeah. they're gonna go out rock with shield. Them. Yeah. Oh, oh, excuse, excuse me. Before I even um, because I'm starting to jump into the undercard. I meant to mention in the, in the prelim, Cool Boy Fulton was on that joint. Cool Boy Steph, out of Philly, only L was in that one. Not too much, you know. Cause he lost. Hey. <laughs> Why you let me talk? Because <laughs> I'm talking about the names that was just on that was leading up to this fight. Speaking of, we, we got a fight we might have to go to. Oh, uh, Norfolk. Cause he had the scope, right? Yeah, him and his brothers. Yeah, we might have to see the shot. Shout out to Sean Davis. Yeah, Norfolk. You know what I'm saying? Scope. And then they finalized. They're gonna be in November. Mm-hmm. I'm saying, I see IDK there, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? This will be the credential. All right, let me, let me real quick. So, he lost him? Yeah, yeah. Stop. Nah, he didn't. Ooh, wait a minute. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Cool God. boy fought in a while too soon, bro. <laughs> and I hope he recovered, bro. But he went out to Japan. Cool boy stepped out of Philly. You know, was unified, what, featherweight, super feather? Okay. All right, excuse me. Excuse me. Let me let me refresh right. This is the problem with no case in here. Just so we know. So cool boy won. Cool boy won. But he did get dropped. He I remember he got dropped in that fight. He did get dropped. <laughs> no face. Uh, hey, no face, man. Come back, bro. <laughs> round five. You got to tell the lies, bro. <laughs> round five, he did get dropped, but he won a split decision. That's hard. That's hard. But um back into the undercard. So Caleb. Caleb, Caleb wins standing uh standing KO. Then we get into the co-main. Danny Swift Garcia's up there. Oh, and it's man. a title fight. And it's a title fight. What if I be fighting? Vegas? This was in, Texas. in this was in I'll look it up. Thank you. Uh but just to get into the Danny and Danny Garcia fight at 154, title fight, he loses. Mm. KO. It's in Vegas. KO. And I'm looking at it, I'm like. All right, this card is okay. This cut, this card is all right. I ain't mad at it. I'm sitting there watching the fight. But he fought at Laura too, though. Laura ain't no. Ain't That's no what I'm saying. I'm like, Laura ain't no like. Laura has got a lot of people out of here. See, this fight. <laughs> I'm saying, I'm mad. I missed it. I got the app so I can go back and watch it. 
But this card, the reason why I wasn't talking about as much and before we get to the main event and, and Danny losing again, um, <laughs> this is a boxing furious card. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, Trump and McCarthy and Caleb, Caleb don't like that fool, you know what I'm saying, and dropped him. Um, you know, Steve Fulton, cool boy. And then you get Laura versus Danny. A lot of people don't even know. People know Danny, but they don't know that Laura was what? Mm -hmm. Former Unified? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. No easy out. Mm -mm. Been the gatekeeper for at least yeah, a decade yeah. now. So, you know, I'm going to go ahead and finish. But I, I, when I look at this car and I see the names, I'm like, this, this car wasn't no slouch. It's like, this car was made for, like, if, if you know, you know. If you've been watching boxing, you know everybody on this car. Yeah, you, you know what I'm saying? Again, not to take nothing away. Again, from Danny, title holder at 140. Moved up to 147. Moved up to 154. You know, now when he's trying to get his title fight going, and it's like, all right, you take that L to Laura, and, and not for nothing. Laura is just, like you said, gatekeeper. I mean, he got a belt. Don't get me wrong. Laura is a WBA super middleweight champion. But he's a gatekeeper too. The top dog, and, and he and he was devastating, bro. It, it was constant pressure, constant pressure. And again, Danny when, throw his hands. And, you know he a counter puncher. He, you know Danny's a counter puncher. And you know, time, you know, and when you and you sitting there waiting on that time to pick your shot, you, you might get clipped. And then while you waiting, and he got clipped while he was waiting, and. Um, it got to the point where you know they, there was some uh, there were some flurries from Danny. I ain't gonna take no respect to him. He showed mad heart. He showed mad heart in that fight. Huh? Was unanimous? No, it was KO. Stop it! Oh, he stopped. You're not he stopped. Out. He stopped Danny. What round? Nine. Damn, stop Danny. Stop Danny. Let it go, brother. Yeah, he, he did, you know what I'm saying? But Danny, even in his post in his post fight, and you know <laughs> you know that warm hug that the refs give you. <laughs> <laughs> you know that it's okay, brother? son. It's all right. It's okay. I, I think it's okay, son. <laughs> I, I think I don't think Danny going going step away from the sport yet. Now I don't think he should. But who uh, want to fight him now? This was to get he, Danny he, back. He, not he, not who want to fight him. This was this fight was to get Danny back in in the main in the mainstream and yeah. way. Yeah. The welterweight had passed. Everybody running for boots. You know, Crawford too. Talk about it. Um, he, he vacated all his belts. Yeah. Well. Well, Crawford looking for him. He looking for the. He looking for that Canelo bag. He looking for that Canelo bag. And I think he don't want it, but okay. Yeah. But uh, this was Danny's chance to get right back. Back in. He beat Marvin. Now he a champion at Super Middle. Now you like maybe can host your own. Yeah. Fights again on the undercard. Now is Danny gonna be okay being not the co-main, but the, but the fight before that, like maybe come over Rosie come out. Like the first, the first guy on the main card. That's where you fall to. That's where or the fall second to. guy on the main card. This, this, this should be a main eventer. But I mean, but and again, I don't want to take nothing from Danny because it's, it's always been an uphill climb. It's like he gets to that that title fight older now. Then, yeah, yeah. But my thing, that's what I'm saying. I don't take nothing. Guys like him, and I mentioned a little bit with Caleb too. Guys like him, you, I don't really discredit them that much because they get into that fight. They still got that hunger to be in the sport. They're doing it for the love. Like, like I said, with Danny, it's like you get to that that hilltop, mm -hmm. knocked down by Keith. Get to that hilltop, mm -hmm. knocked down by Laura. It's like you still showing that competitiveness to keep getting back in there. You know what I'm saying? You still got mad heart. So I don't, I don't take nothing from Danny, but yeah, Laura was Laura was on that ass. <laughs> Laura and now man, Laura trying to get maybe get the Canelo bag too. Yeah. Well, you know? I, well I'm, that's why I'm surprised. With Laura, Charlo never said his name. But and this is what about be my point. That's about to piggyback off. Laura really don't have to go nowhere because just like that, in the blink of an eye, one fifty four and one sixty just got just got crowded. It just, it just we just had like a an influx of boogeymen in one fifty four and one sixty to where you really ain't gotta move. You know what I'm saying? If you if you make hay at one fifty four, and shout out to Charlo. For for uh for being undisputed there at one point because just like I said at, in a blink of an eye, that's, I still that's, think that's, that's a couple bookie men walking think, around here. I still think it's some work. Some some of get some work from Charlo. The, the Charlo got his head straight. Yeah, he. <laughs> I think some jokers get now. The other one, the other brother, I don't know. He might. You know what I'm saying? Shout out. I'm saying take care of your mental health. Yeah. But you know you got Charlo up there. You got. 
Crawford hanging around. Mm-hmm. You and, got uh, and, and your boys and your boy Spence just dropped on uh, on IG. Yeah, he dropped. <laughs> he coming out there. He coming up to one fifty four and one sixty. He just time. He walked around. He, he couldn't make that once a week no more. Yeah. So Spence, Spence is still Spence. Uh, you got that big. What's a big dude? Sebastian. Sebastian Fedora. Heavy hands. Mm-hmm. You know, tall, lanky. Yeah. Causes problems. Mm-hmm. Um, that's super middle. That's what I'm saying. Just like that, it just got crowded again. Yeah, that's a, that's a rough one. That's a rough. One. I remember like not so long ago we had like the Tony Harrisons and your yeah. boy uh, David even making it. Yeah. So like Lauren, oh, they they'll get clipped. Yeah. They'll so like, clipped. like Lauren. Like you, like you said, he's a champion, but he's also the gatekeeper to the big guys. Like, like if you want to see Crawford, Canelo, and them, you're gonna have to get past mm-hmm. And Danny do that. I wouldn't be surprised if Spence trying to fight him yeah. coming back. You Look, know, and, and Danny his dog. Danny rock with Danny rock with Spence too. So Spence might spin the block for him. Yeah, might might try to come back, grab a belt real quick. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Um, but go ahead. The main event. How'd it go? Oh man, this was a uh, open and shut. But shout out to Eddie Berlanga. Um, Canelo was just Canelo, and, and I ain't got a harp on it too much. My, I was like I said, I had that plant fight as the fight of the night. Um, was happy, just dominated. Happy, yeah, happy to see uh, uh, Danny back in the ring. But when it came time for Canelo, it was domination from round one to round twelve, straight yeah. through, clean sweep, clean, yeah. clean sweep. And he and he got dropped. And Berlinga got dropped in that fight. So, and it was one of those where, like, it was when, and, uh, when Berlinga got dropped, it was one of those uh, one of those punches that Berlinga didn't see. But, you know, so you're going to get clipped by those every time. But it wasn't like it, it, it hurt Berlinga too much because he still got up and finished the fight. Yeah. But it was a clean sweep. So, um, not, so I'm not saying that, like, what Canelo's – that's what I'm looking for. What Canelo will do. What's Canelo's real challenge? Next challenge. Who are some people that really the boogie, would give him a challenge outside of the, the people that we want? Out of well, you know, out of anybody. Like, like I mean, let the, let the people know. You know, what I'm saying people they ain't oh, heard us talk about. We ain't gotta, it. We ain't gotta mess around too much. Benavidez. We we gave you a sli- we gave you a you slide. Benavidez after that after that showing that that <coughs> Benavidez Benavidez get the job done against Canelo against this Canelo. Against this Canelo. Benavidez would be a fight. Why well, Benavidez is going to fight Laura, though? That would be a fight I would want to see. Yeah, but we talking about uh, Benavidez that just came back from 175. Yeah, it's a big yeah, so, yeah, so that was crazy. <laughs> but it was, <laughs> but when I think Benavidez is happy, happy weight division is 175. I mean, they're like heavy. They're like heavy. And 175, I mean, look. It didn't look convincing. And that's why, and that's why they make divisions. Because <laughs> I think, in the, in the same thing we said for Danny in his fight, was like maybe one fifty four was a stretch for him. Yeah. Uh, punching power wise, I think uh, Canelo Bibble again. If he want to challenge himself, better be there. Better be there if you want to challenge yourself. Yeah, take the loser or who? The loser. I just don't see that. Everybody says the Terence Crawford thing. Would be close. I just don't see it being close. I mean, y'all talking about Terrence Crawford moving from lightweight all the way to super, what, the 154? And here's my thing with the Canelo and Crawford fight. So Crawford's first fight at 154, by no stretch of the imagination wasn't that any dominate, uh, dominating fight. That's kind of boring. It was, it was a snooze fest. Mm-hmm. That wasn't no dominating performance. Nah, not at all. Who, what what fight are we watching? I don't I don't see the allure of the Crawford fight and uh, Canelo now. Bivol again, yes. Benavidez, I do want to see it again. I if Caleb goes on the revenge to get some more wins, I wouldn't mind seeing Caleb and um, running it back. Canelo running it back. Um, right. I wish that Charlo came in not trying to just to get a check and Charlo came to fight. I think he's athletic enough to do way better than he did. That that disappointed me. Mm-hmm. That does he can't you could tell he can't get a check. But he was a last minute fix for his brother. So be what that is. But yeah. Canelo ain't got many more challenges where it makes sense for him. So 
Um, it's really at this point how much more longer Canelo want to fight. Yeah. You know, got a lot of fights under his belt. He still looks good. So like he can like he stay in shape. I don't see him retiring without trying to run it back with Bevel. Do not see him retiring. You take that last that last step. That'd be his only two losses. Yeah. Can't get Floyd's back. Can't get him with that back. And Bivol's the only one that you can get back. Mm-hmm. I don't see him retiring without running that back. And now, if it's too late when he run it back and lose again, maybe. But I don't see him retiring. I don't see Canelo Alvarez retiring without seeing Demetri Bivol some way somehow. So, do you think that's a closer fight than I? Well, I, this is actually a foregone conclusion because I already know this to be fact. I think he takes that fight, or he will aim for that fight faster than he ends for that fight with Benavidez, though. Oh yeah, I don't think he'll get it right there. Yes. And it's too many unknowns. Like, yeah. Bill is a boxer, but he can't knock me out. Yeah. And if he is, can put you know, <laughs> can't you put you to sleep. So, uh, I think Canelo's not looking for that type of war again. Especially after a, like, after a trilogy. Tri- 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 triple G. G. Yeah. I don't think Canelo's looking for that type of scrap again, but I could be wrong. I look like I'm wrong, but Benavidez doesn't. It don't look like that's what he. Yeah, I mean, and again, Bibble might actually be the war, his last war in that essence. Because, like, these last couple fights, Jamie Mungia, Eddie Berlanga, you know, we gave you your passes with those. You, you fulfilled your, your contract uh, for that, as, as that turns out. Mm-hmm. And now I think he, he goes back into, I think he, he's good with PBC at this point. So, what his next steps uh, moving forward is completely up to him. Um, but it, it, for him, he, he's into what makes sense for Canelo. Cherry yeah. picking, he he didn't he, he think they said last night was like his sixty fifth fight. Yeah, I want to say fights. so. A lot of fights. He had he a lot of fights under his belt. So by all means, he's a Hall of Famer. Yeah, he's a Hall of Famer, no no doubt. So moving forward is if he wants to cruise off into the sunset, by all means, I, I can't hate on him for that. The I, I don't. I don't think Benavidez will be that much of a black eye on his resume, being as how long he's been in the sport. Yeah. He's been in the sport way too long for Benavidez being that to be that much of a black eye on his resume, but it is what it is. It is what it is. Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? Good fights, a lot of sports that we had to recap. Yeah, no, you know what I'm saying? Cause we, you know what I'm saying? Get back together, have to record, you know. NFL like it's gonna be exciting. College football is getting more exciting. Bill Biv- Biv- and um, Biv- Better Be is supposed to be in October. Yep. So you got that coming Top of October. Yep. Top of October. So some good things happening in the sports world, man. But the only way place you can catch the, the, uh, these main takes from the average guys is the IDK Sports Podcast. And you can follow us at IDK Sports Pod twenty three on Instagram. Follow us at IDK Sports Podcast or IDK Sports Media Podcast on YouTube. Subscribe to the channel. You know, follow the page. Or if you want to listen to the audio, you can listen to us on Apple, Amazon, iHeart, Spotify. Uh, I'm missing one. Anywhere. It's a lot of them. Anyway, <laughs> everywhere. Just type in IDK Sports Podcast. And I promise you, we are right there. And you can not miss us every Monday, 5 p.m., all platforms, YouTube included. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. You can follow me at Anthony E. Great on Instagram. Follow my man Kenny at Finesse in the Gram. Sure. Catch us on Monday at 5 p.m. And just hit the button. Hit the game button. Come in, hit the like, subscribe, notify so you don't miss any content yes, that we get. Until next time, follow.